thank you for that. I've, uh, you know, we on air, on television, sit and watch planes arriving, US State Department planes, Hillary Clinton, George Mitchell. Uh, you probably don't even think about everything, all these other things which William has just showed us, which are all going on behind the scenes. Very interesting stuff, and I want to pick up on something William actually said that was talking about metrics, this idea of the information's out there. How do we know it's actually being used? How do we visualize it? And our next speaker is a perfect person uh, to explain that, that to us. Juliana Rotich is from Ushahidi. I'm not going to explain what it's all about, except to say that it is all this information that we're talking about today, it's a perfect illustration of how it can actually be used and we can see it in front of our eyes and quantify it, uh, and a very, very good uh, case study of the Haiti earthquake. So, Juliana. I'd like to thank Al Jazeera for uh, inviting um, Ushahidi and by extension Swift River. Um, I'll touch on how um, the platform was used in Haiti and then I'll touch on Swift River which is a new initiative that builds on some of the lessons that we learned from the implementation in Haiti. Um, so just to kind of give you a quick overview of Ushahidi, uh, the easiest way I'd, I'd like to, um, a quick analogy is think of it as an upturned umbrella, like um, you have an umbrella in the wind and it gets upturned. And the spokes of the umbrella basically give you, um, those would be the different information sources. So it comes into, uh, it, it's all aggregated and then presented onto a map that way you can see what's happening where. And um, crowdsourcing, it, that's what we call, uh, I guess, crowdsourcing crisis information, but this can also um, be used to aggregate information coming from different media outlets or from different sources. Um, the information, as uh, the different uh, speakers have shown, can come from different um, platforms, it's become very, very important uh, to include mobile in, to, uh, in how you think of strategy because uh, as more and more people come online, you cannot ignore um, that particular source of information. And um, Ushahidi kind of, we realized this a bit early on because uh, of how we came up with the Ushahidi idea. It came up during the post-election violence in Kenya and a lot of the people who had the information that we needed did not have internet access, but they had a mobile phone. So it was very important to design for varying shades of connectivity, and that's why you can get information from SMS, from email, web, and we've also done Twitter integration. Uh, we partnered with uh, Al Jazeera. They used our, our alpha version of the software in 2008 to uh, aggregate uh, reports during the war on Gaza. So that's something we are very happy about and we hope to continue that relationship with the new tools that we're building um, in terms of managing uh, torrents of data. And I'll just show you a quick video that way you can get a, a general idea of some of the people in the community who are working to create this software and um, the people who are instrumental in the response to the most devastating earthquake to hit Haiti. The past 10 days was virtually revolutionary humanitarian response, but never in the past have we been able to deal with this information vacuum that typically exists when you face 24, 72 hours worth of just no information, everybody's scrambling, what to send, how much to send, what have you, really what the extent of the impact is. In large part, thanks to Ushahidi's approach to information collection and e processing, we were able to fill that gap about a couple hours after the earthquake over the course of two or even two men. Can I learn from you how you would solve the biggest phobia? Uh, so a class of mine called me and, and asked me to set up an Ushahidi instance for Haiti. All in all, it took about an hour or so to set it up. And we came inundated by traffic.
gave us an opportunity to really learn by doing. Um, and this has been tremendous for us as leaders. Um, it really adds to each other's strengths. I've been necessary from the beginning, uh, but just haven't been there. How many software developers have a chance to work with the State Department or work with the Coast Guard to tell them, hey, you know, there's somebody stuck under you know, a glass wall somewhere. Here's their phone number. Here's where we think they are. Go find them. The position that we're trying to build is we should be as an active implementation looking beyond, at least I am, watching for uses, looking at innovations in Asian Africa to try to help people in Haiti and leveraging volunteers all around the world. I mean, it's really a collaborative effort. And so as a leader, we work together on realizing who are the greatest and most ordinary people together we can touch and help them. We have an urgent request for a school in near Parker Floyd, kind of as a class builder. The SAR team had originally been sent out by the NSSF. They had gotten to the location and realized that there was a bomb location, and I ended up being in a position, an extremely accurate location, and a SAR team made it out. So it became very clear to us that um, it's been clear to a lot of people really in the last couple of years that the media landscape has greatly changed because uh, um, as Ethan Zuckerman um, pointed out that there are many people blogging about different topics. Sometimes it could be blogging about their cat or their dog or perhaps the little bird that's been flitting about. Um, but sometimes when something major happens in that particular area, they... Uh, they become citizen journalists. And uh, in that respect, it, 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 it's, it's useful to pay attention to what the public is saying. And with the Haiti earthquake, we also realized that the, the people on the internet would also like to be part of the solution. So giving them channels of how, that they, how they can contribute, uh, be it the Haitian diaspora with translating messages or um, French speakers who could also help with translating messages. Um, that's how the 4636 project came about. So it becomes very important to give the public a way for them to also contribute um, and to also get their reports of what is happening around them. And um, I'm not gonna read the statistics, just really quickly. Basically, we had a torrent of data, a lot of information coming in at us and uh, Crowdsourcing is sort of the easy part because we, we we built Ushahidi and the tool was there and we were able to crowdsource that. But now the next challenge became managing that data. How do you manage crowdsource data or how do you manage data coming from different sources with varying levels of, um, you, you, you trust different sources differently. So it's, it's useful to try and create some sort of veracity slider because um, information from one source uh, has a lower, um, you trust it a bit less, but then you want information from trusted sources to bubble up quicker. But then again, you do not want to miss something that would come from a blogger uh, that, uh, that is in a far out, uh, far out location, but you want that piece of news. And in the case of Al Jazeera, how do you um, sort, so how do, you, how do we separate the signal from the chaff? How do you deal with uh, retweets? How do you find the original information? Uh, or even when you have SMSs coming from different parts of the country, if most news kind of gets covered, at least in the Kenyan perspective, uh, most of the urban areas were well covered, but we knew that there were things happening in the rural areas. What about what's going on there? Um, how do you deal with that? So um, someone is always there first. It's hardly the, the press. So sometimes we are our own first responders. 
we are each other's own um, source of first-hand information. So it becomes important to get the alerts like um, uh, we heard earlier. And if you could get that alert from your neighbor or uh, an, somebody from a certain area that you're lo interested in, it becomes very, very valuable. And what if we listened to the crowd? Um, because clearly, sometimes the crowd can tell us uh, some information. And not just about what is popular. Um, what is popular may not be exactly pertinent, may not be exactly pertinent. If you were to go by um, the popularity of Justin Bieber on Twitter, that it's, it's kind of an, an interesting phenomenon, just uh, Justin Bieber on Twitter. But um, we need to have new tools that kind of put these things in context and help us deal with um, the emerging landscape that we're finding ourselves in. And uh, we're borrowing from the idea of having a, a crisis dashboard where you can have all these different sources of data. Just uh, a simple tool like Twit TweetDeck can help you track different hashtags, but then bringing all of that in and including the visualization uh, portion of it, um, it, it becomes important to sort of filter all this information and present it uh, in a way that can be digested by you, yourself or other people in your organization. And the two ways that Swift River is doing that is uh, it can be curated by either a crowd or it can be uh, curated using algorithms. The algorithms can help you deal with the veracity. You can assign a certain score to certain sources. And the filtering um, process basically works such that you have crowdsourced information, then you have the filter, which is Swift River, and then you have refined results, which can then be weighted, and then also those can be visualized or um, dispersed as alerts that could be even more useful to others. So um, in a nutshell, it's an aggregator with entity extraction. So we are providing these tools and we're doing it in an open manner because we believe in open innovation. And that's why we've created what we call Swift Web Services. So for example, if uh, Al Jazeera or the State Department is uh, collecting SMSs uh, from a certain, let's say, President Obama's trip or something, but you want just the tweets that deal with, let's say, trade or they deal with um, uh, African study, uh, African issues, or it, it becomes a challenge to deal with 17,000 SMSs. And if you want to address the question of trade, how do you deal with that? So we've created a tool that actually parses the text and can help you tag these SMSs and provide a taxonomy of sorts for you to deal with that data. And this also helps us deal with connections between sources, uh, um, data coming from different sources. So if we're getting uh, this particular cluster of data from one source and also another cluster of data from another source, then it helps us also kind of figure out what's going on where. And what is the point of all this? Uh, we're basically trying to save time because um, when you have a major event, you do not have the time to comb through each and every source, but you do want to focus on specific sources. And in the case of media, you want to focus on um, the leads that are useful in your work. And those are, that way you can start chasing that particular story instead of um, dealing with this torrent of information. And of course, trying to figure out relevant content and suppressing the noise. And obviously to curate it all and make it uh, searchable. The Internet Archive is now, um, it, it's now archiving um, Twitter content, but before that, there wasn't a way of you um, searching previous information relating to a particular event. So this just kind of helps you um, aggregate, cluster, and make sense of data in a way that is um, relevant and useful, not only for that particular time, but also in future. And um, I think my time is up. I'll be happy to take any questions. And uh, thanks, thank you again for inviting us. And I, I represent a really great community 
who are very grateful to be part of uh, this forum.